Do not fear monsters. A 1.1 gram of dried Cubensis B plus mushrooms trip report, sent in by a subscriber. Preface. Before I get into the trip, I'd like to share some context. This is mainly because my story seems to be a bit out of the ordinary, in the sense that most people tend to experiment with drugs when they're young, but also because I did some writing over the last couple of years which I want to make use of. I am now 30 years old, and after suffering from depression from my late teens and through the majority of my adult life, with a quite severe period of roughly two years where I was heading towards utter annihilation, learning about my mind seemed like an imperative operation to undertake. And to be honest, I'm not certain whether my everyday experience now resembles that of a normal and healthy individual, but if that isn't the case, at least I've learnt to deal with it. When I was drinking, smoking, and unhealthily eating my way into an early grave, or at least severe and possibly chronic illness at the beginning of my twenties, I found myself in a hole, which I would describe as nothing short of actual hell, and I'm not throwing this term around lightly. There were periods where, if I didn't numb myself with substances or other strong stimuli, my psychological pain was so severe that it would manifest physically into a burning sensation within and all over my body, as if I was in purgatory. Eventually, I found myself at a crossroads with the impending consequences of my behaviour becoming more and more apparent, and was faced with a decision. Adopt personal responsibility, or forfeit my soul and possibly even my life. I decided against the latter, realising that even if I wasn't at fault for what life had brought me, it was mine to fix. That's when I slowly started my ascent out of that hole, into a hopefully brighter and happier future. I started going to psychotherapy and learnt as much as I could about psychology myself. I dove into evolutionary biology and how it relates to our psyches, spiritual practices and even more esoteric practices. I also read books and listened to podcasts. Didn't really care what it was, as long as it could help me out. Eventually, after getting a pretty stable grasp on my reality, I stumbled upon psychedelics, specifically psilocybin containing mushrooms. This was a very peculiar finding for me because even at my lowest, I never reached for any illegal drugs, apart from trying marijuana a couple of times in my late teens, and quickly realising that it wasn't for me. I was always afraid of hard drugs, perhaps because my parents instilled this in me, perhaps because of what I had witnessed in my social circle, but probably a bit of both. To this day, I've never done cocaine, speed or ecstasy, much less heroin or meth, literally nothing apart from alcohol and cigarettes. But these little wonders of nature utterly transformed my life to a degree, which none of the other things I tried were capable of. Of course, this is quite a reckless statement to make, and very much prone to recency bias. For all I know, I could be vegetating away in a mental institution, knocked out on tranquilizers, if it weren't for everything prior to this. Nevertheless, these compounds had a profound impact on my life, and I wouldn't want to miss them at all. But how did I get there? Well, it took quite a while for me to get from the initial adapting of responsibility to actually sitting behind the steering wheel and having a decent idea of where to go. That time came around late 2015, and in early 2016, I'd begun to feel invincible, which is also where I had my first sober mystical experience. By that time, I was full blown into all kinds of gurus and their crazy stuff. Wim Hof Cold Exposure, Elliot Hulse Bioenergetics, Teal Swan Shadow Work, Mindfulness Meditation and what have you. It was my personal self-healing utopia. One day, as I was standing on the balcony of my flat in Vienna, I took a deep breath, and suddenly, the ordinary world disappeared, and the universe opened up in front of me. I'm not sure whether my eyes were open or closed at the time, but what appeared before me was nothing short of spectacular. In what looked like a 2D representation of the universe, the main attraction seemed to be a vast blue stream, laced with fine white lines all throughout it, flowing everywhere in this universe. This spectacle was accompanied by a clear and immovable sense of knowing, that this stream was the stream of consciousness, and the white laces were souls flowing within it. I felt utterly peaceful, and just like it appeared, it vanished again. The world solidified once more, and I saw houses, trees and cars passing by on the road, but it hadn't fully left me. I was glad that the universe had shared its secret with me. I was first clued in on psychedelics by the Joe Rogan experience. Even though I had witnessed all sorts of drug abuse, including psychedelics, throughout my late teens and early twenties, this was the first time I thought that there was something there to be gained. I didn't want to just get high, I wanted to learn something, and the way he put it, it seemed interesting and well worth my while. Additionally, 
The way he described some of those experiences felt oddly similar to what I had felt or witnessed on my balcony. So I turned to my best friend B to compare notes, because not only is he the single closest person in my life, besides my girlfriend, who funnily enough shares a bunch of similarities with him, but it's also the channel through which I was able to witness all the drug abuse and how admirably he handled himself. After asking him about his experiences, I came to the conclusion that there were many similarities, but also a lot more to discover, so I decided that I would perform my own investigation eventually. It took me another four years until I first tried psychedelics in 2020, just after the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. The trip. We got some mushrooms from a friend who grew them herself. It was more by chance than us seeking out an experience, but with the first wave of lockdowns coming through, it seemed like a good opportunity to take a bit of a look inside. Looking back, it all came together pretty nicely. Tripping with B, being my best friend and his plethora of drug experiences, always makes for a great setting. I trust him fully to always have my back, but I'm also quite a cautious individual, so we started out real low. At first, we only took about 0.4 Gs, which didn't really do much in hindsight, but was plenty for me. I was well occupied with breathing walls and intensified lights, colours and sounds, having next to no experience of drugs. The second time around, we bumped it up to 0.8 Gs and turned on the sound of violence by Cassius on B's huge TV screen, making the room as dark as possible and running in front of it, feeling like we were in it. At some point, B turned on some shamanic music and I got to experience the whole ladder of my emotions, only observing, yet fully feeling. Definitely fun and interesting. The third time, we took 1.1 Gs, and this is also when I would say the mushrooms first took us into their world. As you can gather, this happened over two years ago, so please excuse the patchy description. I did my best in recalling the experience. We watched some nature documentaries for the come up, but turned it off as soon as we started noticing effects. We explored the room for a bit, and I felt very light, starting to notice fractal patterns everywhere I looked. B had that Vitruvian man picture by Leonardo da Vinci on his wall, which I remembered what it looked like, but couldn't make out what it was depicting for the life of me, no matter how close I got to it. Eventually, I started feeling heavy and nauseous, which was a signal for me to lie down. I took to the couch and looked at my hand, when something interesting happened. It was like the entire life force was being sucked out of it, turning to almost skin and bones. It looked like the hand of some horror movie creature, very dark, almost black. For some reason, this didn't frighten me, but I did follow my arm up to my shoulder, just to check if it was in fact my hand. This proved to be foreshadowing, but more on that later. Eventually, we turned on that shamanic music again and darkened the room. It was time for takeoff. With the music as my guide, I simply laid on the couch as the energy in me kept building. I could feel and see my chakras lighting up and connecting to each other until they formed a beam of light, escaping at the crown, connecting to the universe. This felt like pure ecstasy, but I seemed to want more, and eventually I escaped my body through my crown chakra. This was amazing, especially as a first timer. A fractal flight through space and time, visiting alien planets and being shown the secrets of the universe. After travelling like this for a while, in both utter gratitude and disbelief that something like this was possible, I asked it, the mushrooms, whoever was showing me all this, who am I? This question instantly transformed the scenery playing on the screen of my shut eyelids. I found myself looking from behind at a benevolent being, arms spread wide open, looking down on what appeared to be our planet, Earth. It looked very similar to that famous Jesus statue in Rio de Janeiro, but it was huge compared to the tiny planet in front of it. I thought, clearly, I'm God. Although I wasn't really thinking, it was more of an intuitive sense of knowing. Of course, anyone with psychedelic experiences knows what I'm talking about here. As I looked closer, I saw what could have been millions of particles trickling down from me, Jesus, or God, onto Earth. They were tiny at first, almost like snowflakes, but as I kept looking closer, they started glowing and getting bigger, and suddenly, I was one of them. Moving towards Earth as this glowing ball, made of pure light, it started to envelop me. It took me a moment to figure out that I wasn't inside Earth, but actually in a womb. I could even see light shine through the skin of my mother's belly. The level of detail here was incredible. This was very interesting because I didn't know much about Eastern philosophy or religion at the time, but listened to a lot of Alan Watts later, and this just made too much sense. As most of you know, these trips happen in waves. 
We consumed the mushrooms on a fairly empty stomach, but prepared food beforehand. Periodically we'd get up and eat a couple of bites, and then lay back down. At some point B decided to sear up a steak, which was probably both of our favourite food. This was also incredible to witness. I felt a childlike sense of excitement like I can't remember ever having felt before. I just simply couldn't fathom how he was able to do such a complicated thing, seriously like I had never done such a thing in my life. It was a truly awe-inspiring sight to behold, and now that I think about it, it felt oddly similar to Terence McKenna's description of meeting the machine elves on DMT. I surely gave way to wonder. We ate the steak with our bare hands, which was a spectacle in and of itself. Highly recommended. Eventually it got to the point where my ego situated itself to the conditions and started feeling very emotionally heavy. Over the years of my self-healing journey, I'd gotten quite good at introspection. During many deep states of meditation, a scene popped up in front of my mind's eye, wherein I was looking at a younger version of myself about eight years old. This was also the time in my life when my parents' relationship went down the drain, which eventually culminated in my depression. That inner child was always sitting on the floor, knees bent, with his arms wrapped tightly around them and face buried between them, afraid and overwhelmed. I figured this was a good time to talk to him, so I went there. He was sitting there, just like always, and I asked him in an empathetic way, How are you doing? He said it's just too much for him, and doesn't want to do it anymore, which is exactly how I felt. I understood him completely. My mum used to have this habit, where whenever I had a problem, she produced a bigger one of her own, so I'd end up having to take care of her, instead of getting help with my problems. I really hated that, and figured I couldn't possibly do this to a child. I was the grown-up and knew how to handle myself, while he was young and helpless, so I decided to put my feelings aside and simply be there for him. I told him that it was okay, and that I would look out for him. I did so many times in our previous encounters during my meditations, but back then, there was always someone else or sometimes many people I'd have to protect him from. This time, it was just the two of us. He lifted his head and looked at me, longingly, as if he was saying, I really need that right now. Someone to look out for me. I opened my arms as an invitation. He immediately got up, jumped right into my arms, and I embraced him lovingly. A second later, he suddenly started to transform, just like my hand did at the start of the trip, but this time it was all of him. The life was sucked out of him, and he turned into an obscure, almost pitch black creature. His nails grew out and became claws, his teeth became fangs, and he screeched at me with a sound no human could produce. Like before, this surprised me, but it didn't scare me for some reason, and I never let go of him, simply loosening my grip so he would have room to manoeuvre in his newly found state. I wondered why this obviously horrific sight didn't scare the living crap out of me, and then it hit me. Oh my god, this is exactly what we become when we're afraid. We turn into monsters trying to protect ourselves. We're scared, so we attack. And, it is how we can check if people are being sincere with us and whether or not we can trust them. Of course, this all makes sense. Had I let go of him in that moment, it would have added to his pain of getting rejected for what he was. His fear would have been confirmed. There's no one he can trust with being fully himself. So I kept holding him, and told him telepathically that I would be there for him no matter what, and I'm not afraid of him, that I see his pain and it doesn't scare me. I'm willing to take it on, and provide him the space to heal. All of me is there for all of him. And with that, he transformed back into my younger self, and immediately fell asleep on my shoulder. Conclusion The trip didn't just end there of course, but nothing of great significance happened after that, and that was the main story I wanted to tell. This was one of my earliest trips, and although I since have had many more experiences, including a lot more profound ones, I decided to write up this report simply because it's the one story I find myself telling the most to people who ask me about psychedelics, because it's quite relatable, even to people who have never even tried them. I recently discovered Vivek's channel, and have blown through roughly half the videos already. Aw, oh, cheers mate, appreciate that. One video in particular inspired me to write this report, where after reading out the trip report, he talks about how you don't have to go full blast breakthrough mode in order to learn something from these substances. This experience was not only great in terms of gaining a deeper connection with my inner child, healing past trauma and all that, but it's also, I believe, truly good advice for anyone. 
people behave that way, often. So if a loved one, or someone you care deeply about attacks you, seemingly for no reason, there might be past trauma involved. There's a good chance that they've been hurt in the past, maybe even by your actions and need to guard their vulnerability. Putting one's ego aside in such moments and opening up a space for healing can be very powerful, not only for the other person, but also for oneself. The resulting connection will be genuine, coming from a place of complete acceptance, maybe even unconditional love. And of course, when we heal or help to heal someone, we also heal ourselves. After all, we're all one. Cheers.